Facebook's new metaverse is terrifying. The metaverse is a new augmented reality where users will live inside a digital universe. A digital universe where you can meet your friends, find new people, do business, sell meta-only content, go to church, catch up with your family, travel across dimensions, and even fill virtual objects as though they were real. Already, people are getting married inside the metaverse, businesses are setting up shop in the metaverse, and Snoop Dogg is buying virtual property in the metaverse. And now fans of Snoop Dogg are paying hundreds of thousands to buy virtual land next to their idol. Because we're now at a point Point where even Snoop Dogg is looking to create his own universe called Snoopverse, with all of this happening inside Zuckerberg's all-encompassing metaverse, where what you see, hear, and feel is entirely controlled by Mark Zuckerberg. This is a gigantic process that Russell Brand refers to as the colonization of consciousness because Facebook is doing everything it can to create a monopoly on human existence, where society and culture is imported into a universe run by a megalomaniac. This all may seem like some sort of gimmicky marketing. It may seem impossible, I mean, how on earth could a social media company create their own universe? At least these were my first thoughts. But after making a video on the metaverse, I began to find out more and more about the absolute insanity of the metaverse. It became very clear to me that this is a project more evil than I could have possibly imagined. And here's why. Mark Zuckerberg's expansion into the metaverse comes as other billionaires are venturing into new realms. As Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk expand into space, Zuckerberg is expanding his monopoly into human consciousness. Now, Facebook is already the eighth biggest company in the world with control over 2 billion users worldwide. Facebook alone already has five times the amount of active users than any other social media company, and Instagram is following suit. But for Zuckerberg, this wasn't enough. If Facebook was to monopolize human consciousness and control an entirely new reality, Facebook needed to lure people in. Because once enough influential people, businesses, and cultural groups are in, everyone else then has no choice but to jump into the metaverse or face extreme outcasting. So the first step for Facebook to lure people into its new reality was to dominate the virtual reality market. Which is why in 2014, Facebook acquired Oculus Rift for a total of $2 billion. Now Oculus, for those who don't know, controls 75% of the virtual reality market. And this number will only continue to grow as Facebook sets to subsidize these exact headsets to increase their availability, also that Facebook Facebook can start to hook us in with our first free hit. It really won't be much longer until you're being offered a subsidized or even free headset to lure you into the metaverse. But even still, you wouldn't really have any real reason to stay in the metaverse for extended periods of time or even join the metaverse in the first place. The only way Facebook could addict you to extract the most amount of money from your data, privacy, and consciousness would be to envelop society as a whole. Which is why Facebook is actively working to control our reality in three key ways through religious control, economic control, and political control. If Facebook could get religious groups, social groups, businesses, shops, workspaces, news, and political groups to be sucked into the metaverse, then you yourself would have no other choice but to join in which would then allow Facebook to reshape an entire culture, an entire generation of people. They just needed to trick enough users, or what Zuckerberg refers to as dumb f**ks, to join in and become addicted. That's exactly why during the development of the metaverse, Facebook developers have been regularly meeting religious leaders. For example, religious leaders like Sam Collier, the pastor for the megachurch Hillsong. The church was approached by Facebook, with the proposition being that the church could gain far-reaching expansion if they were to join in on the metaverse. All they had to do was become exclusive to the metaverse. This was an offer that was all too tempting in a world that continually shuns away the church from regular life. So the Hillsong Church agreed and is now in an exclusive partnership with Facebook. This is far from just an anomaly. Since 2017, Facebook has been courting all sorts of religious leaders to lure them into joining the metaverse. But why is Facebook doing all of this with unknown religious leaders? Well, according to Facebook's chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook hopes to quote, host religious services in virtual reality spaces, as well as use augmented reality as an educational tool to teach children the story of their faith. With Bishop Robert Barron claiming that Facebook is now giving people, quote, the kind of intimate experience of the mass they wouldn't normally have. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data, all their secrets, their lives, their futures. Whoever controls the data controls the future. 
But in our society, we no longer value church, religion, community, and spirituality. Instead, we've abandoned these things for a new religion, relentless consumerism, where most of us are so devoid of either ambition or interest, we have nothing to fear and nothing to hope. We're a populace without religious belief to imbue our existence with transcendental meaning. We are, as Nietzsche described, the last men, the people who have lost all meaning in their lives whilst never being fulfilled by anything and contributing nothing of value. So the question is, what is left for us? Well, it's simple consumerism and entertainment. That's why most of us are vapid, tawdry consumers looking to stuff the empty pit inside of us to give us any sense of purpose. So if Facebook were going to pull in the masses to the metaverse, they would need to pull in the money, the shops, the clothes, the businesses, the celebrities, all the entertainment. Which is why we're already seeing virtual reality becoming the norm. Justin Bieber, for example, has already been paid off to perform a live concert within the metaverse. And with this concert, investors have been eagerly buying up online concert venues. It's why Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Burberry, and all these other major clothing brands are buying up NFTs in the metaverse. Dolce and Gabbana have just sold their own high-end fashion for a record six million dollars in the metaverse. And investors are now buying up shopping malls, properties, all within the metaverse. Because experts are now predicting that the metaverse will foster a brand new flourishing economy. And this isn't just something in the far future, this is happening in a matter of years. And it's no joke, because it means the real world economy will be subsumed by the virtual. And now this may not seem all too bad, until you ask yourself, how does Facebook benefit from any of this? Well, Facebook Facebook will have total power. Facebook will dictate the brands that are sold, the small businesses run, the land you own and the sites you see. Which means Facebook could choose to ban you for whatever reason it deems fit. Facebook could literally control the value of your business through its advanced algorithms. And if you don't believe me, Facebook is already engaging in this sort of activity as I speak. Facebook is using Centra to track its users not just on Facebook, but across the entire internet. Centra tracks different profiles that a user visits, their message recipients, their linked accounts, the pages they visit. It then centralizes all this information within its databases. Facebook then uses this with its other program called Tasks, which allows Facebook's censorship team to communicate with other big tech firms so that they can coordinate censorship across all platforms. This means that Facebook can control businesses not just within Facebook, but across the entire internet. The Tasks platform allows Facebook employees to communicate about projects they're working on together. That includes Facebook censorship teams, including the so-called community well-being team, the integrity team, and the hate speech engineering team, who all use the Task platform to discuss which individuals or hashtags or websites to ban. And what's more is that through all of this tracking, Facebook has gained unparalleled amounts of your personal information. This is why we've all had that weird experience when our devices try to sell us products after mainly just talking about it with friends and family. Toys are what I'm the most interested in right now. If, if I were to buy something right now, it would be dog toys. First website up. Oh my God! It's right there! Social media is now so effective at modeling and categorizing our behaviors and predicting what we're likely to buy next that companies like Facebook already know our interests before we've even typed it up. But just imagine what this means for the metaverse. When you go shopping in the metaverse, when you go to concerts, when you meet your friends in your virtual houses, when your entire life and all your interactions are being fed into an algorithm that exploits you, this is a recipe for disaster. Instead of just going to a Justin Bieber or a Travis Scott concert, you'll be going in metaverse concerts that track the exact songs at the exact moments you showed signs of enjoyment. The metaverse will know the dances you do and the other metaverse users that you are attracted to. With all of this data going to a man who is consistently questioned in Congress, a man a man whose whole story is plagued with unethical business practices, a man who causes users dumb f**ks, who uses sophisticated brain science and behavioral modeling to addict you to his products, who depresses you deliberately, who makes you anxious, who makes you mentally ill, all to hook you into his algorithms so that you can feel a temporary sense of passive numbness while he sells off your privacy. So then this brings up the very important question. Do we trust Mark Zuckerberg to own reality? To me, I can't shake off the feeling that Mark Zuckerberg's digital utopia has uncanny parallels to the utopian vision that define the nightmares of the 20th century. You see, this is where the metaverse begins to take a much more sinister turn. If you're gonna take anything from this video, this next section is of vital importance because this could be one of the worst things to have ever happened in the 21st century. Now by this point, you'll most likely be wired into the metaverse, as all your friends, community, religious groups, celebrities, businesses and shops are all operating within it. But the final question is how do you stay in the metaverse 
permanently. Well, to keep you hooked, the metaverse will make you feel incredible. Because after every meta game you play, after every meta friend you meet, after every meta concert you watch, there will be a rush of dopamine saturating your brain. You'll never want to leave. You can be what you want, do what you want, when you want. And then you'll repeat this cycle every day of every week of every month of every year. Jump into the metaverse, go to work in the metaverse, meet friends in the metaverse, play games in the metaverse, party in the metaverse, find love in the metaverse. In the metaverse, you will never have to use your imagination again. You will never have to think for yourself because all of that is done for you. All the thoughts you have, all the opinions you hold that don't conform to the party line will gleefully be scrubbed from your consciousness. And if you still don't see why this is a terrifying prospect, we need to look into the consequences this brings. The metaverse will put you under a massive illusion. After making money in the metaverse, you'll feel productive after falling in love in the metaverse, you'll feel incredible. After buying land in the metaverse, you'll feel accomplished. All your problems will disappear. You'll finally have community. You feel like you're achieving something great, like your life is finally intact. And it's this feeling of accomplishment that brings you back to the metaverse every single day. But it's only when you take off the headset and look around you do you realize you're a lab rat. You haven't achieved anything. You're alone, you're empty inside, you haven't made any progress, you were just tricked into thinking that you did. You haven't achieved anything. And what's even worse is that behind this whole addiction is something even more sinister. Your artificial life, your virtual memories and experiences are going to someone else, someone who's winning, someone who's in control of your entire life. You see, Mark Zuckerberg is delighted by the idea of a population that can no longer think for themselves. A nation of passive consumers bowing down to the throes of big tech billionaires. But once Facebook's got the users addicted to this virtual reality, they need to make sure that there is no dissent that might break the population's trance. Because if you're going to run a universe for the benefit of a few, it's very dangerous to let people have their own thoughts. The only way you can effectively make your users passive, obedient citizens is through fear and silence. Free speech is the most dangerous thing for the metaverse's continued existence. Because free speech doesn't exist for those in power, the point of free speech is to secure the rights of the unpopular. Free speech is the only thing that allows contrary opinions to exist. So if free speech were to exist in the metaverse, that would be gravely inconvenient for Zuckerberg. It impedes his technocratic utopian vision. It's a threat to his authority. It's what gives way to a meta-insurrection. It's exactly for this reason that we've seen supposed Thor criminals being wiped from social media, whose businesses and livelihoods are stripped away for asking the wrong thing. By this point, it's a known fact that Silicon Valley is defined by its intolerance of dissent, by their encouraging of groupthink, their control of what people believe. In fact, it's for this reason that so many journalists and commentators are no longer able to question big pharma and government actions. That's why there are no more Edward Snowdens. That's why more often than not, the powerful are no longer held accountable. Because big tech censorship doesn't just destroy expression, it destroys thinking and innovation. Censorship leads to self-censorship. People learn what they're allowed to express and what they're allowed to believe. We become narrow in our thinking, art dies, banality takes its place, science becomes impossible. And if you don't like that, you'll be banned from the metaverse. And no, this won't be a normal ban. You'll be missing vital communication. You'll be banished from your community. You'll be ostracized and left in the strands of the forgotten real world. Already those whose politics differs from the technocratic plutocracy are banned from vital functions of the virtual world. For example, PayPal and even Airbnb all take down accounts of people's views they oppose. So you better not express your true thoughts. No normal person in their right mind supports any of this. No one born and socialized into Western values would even have to think about this. No, instead this comes from billionaires like Zuckerberg who are eagerly working to control society, to take away the power of the masses. This is how they get control. Because once Zuckerberg can dictate your political opinions, he can then dictate almost anything else. That's why in the metaverse, there will be no backlash. How could there be, when almost all of the conversation is controlled by Facebook anyway? This is power, the likes of which we've never seen before. No one voted for Mark Zuckerberg. He's a megalomaniac worth over $70 billion. In fact, he might be one of the most unpopular people on the planet. And yet, he will be the one in control of our new reality. And even more worrying, no one is here to defend us. Because no one has the power to anymore. Governments around the world all rely on Mark Zuckerberg and all the other tech giants to stay in power. But there is one other player in the game. Another player that will have total control of our reality. A player even more creepy than Mark Zuckerberg. The CCP. Now I bring up the CCP a lot in my videos, but for this point, it's extremely important that we understand the power the CCP will have over the metaverse. Because as the metaverse becomes the new reality for the global population, China could effectively control the metaverse's entire 
this fear. China could effectively control the infrastructure behind the metaverse, thanks to China's Digital Silk Road initiative, which finances a miscellany of countries' telecommunication systems. China is gaining more and more control of the physical switch. China is doing everything it can to buy up servers and internet infrastructure. And China is not only going after our telecommunication systems, but China is now going after the core components needed to fuel the metaverse. It's for this reason that China is pushing us closer and closer to World War III. China is vehemently training for an invasion of Taiwan, surrounding Taiwan with 150 fighter jets. China is continually training its troops to land on the coast of Taiwan. In fact, China is now even practicing invading the Taiwan presidential building. So why is China risking a third world war? Well, because Taiwan dominates the semiconductor industry that supports all of our computing needs. China understands that we are falling down the rabbit hole of big tech and virtual reality. That's why if China controls the resources needed to sustain our virtual atomized augmented addiction, China will likely become even more of a linchpin on the global stage. This power over the physical infrastructure will then in turn be vulnerable to Chinese hacking and communist influence over the minds of Meta users. If people are owning their property, earning a living and building relationships in the metaverse, then any deliberate service outbreaks will completely destroy everything we live for. Because outside of the metaverse, we won't have anything to show for ourselves. When all the key pillars of society are taken into the metaverse, our real reality will be a barren, empty, nihilistic landscape. A wasteland of passive non-consumers who are addicted to escapism, unable to ever reach the levels of satisfaction the metaverse provided. Our only way of escaping the evil that is the metaverse is to create meaningful lives. Lives that feel visceral disgust by living in a dystopian virtual reality. We need to create better role models than megalomaniac billionaires and vapid celebrities. We need to reassess the true value of physical connection, not just connection based around hedonistic impulses, boorishness and nihilism. Instead, we need lives based around stoicism, discipline, responsibility, and decency. We need to build the inner character within ourselves to reject this poison junk. We need to turn our back on a metaverse that is sterile and hollow and re-empower the parts of our lives that have been destroyed by big tech giants in the first place.